Okay, good morning, brothers. Uh, we are seeing the various classifications of the term, and most of the classifications we have already seen. Now we are coming to another related to classification, but very important because that point will come again and again. Logic, every point that is considered, it's not over. Slowly we are building step by step, like the bricks are kept one over the other, we are building up. If the foundation, what is given, is not clear, what is going to be told later will not be clear either. Now this, I am making a distinction between, or logicians are making a distinction between, denotative and connotative use of the terms. Or we can say, what is denotation and what is connotation. So, very important distinction. Denotation as against connotation. Mind the spelling. Denotation has only D, N, 1, N. Connotation has got 2, N. So, don't simplify it and make it 1. So, you may uh, take note of the spelling. Now, what is each one of them? What is denotation and what is connotation? I just give the definition that is given there. Then with the example, we will try to clarify. Denotation refers to the variety of individual instances to which a term can be applied or extended. And then that you will have to study by heart. Even if I come and ask you, even at night, you must be able to say, what is denotation? I will explain. It refers to the variety of individual instances to which a term can be applied or extended. For instance, I am giving a term, a tree. That term, what are the individual instances to which that term can be applied? All those individual things that, are, that can be called by the term tree. The, the denotation of the tree is the, num the number of individual uh, instances to which the term can be applied. So, once again, denotation refers to the variety of individual instances to which a term can be applied or extended. The term tree or the term man. What is the denotation of man? Or man means human being. All those individual things or individual creatures who can be called by the term man. So, as many human beings, so many denotation. Suppose there are 10 million human beings, that is the denotation of the, the term man. So, as many trees, so is the number, so is the denotation of the term tree. All those individual things to which this term can be applied. College, what is the denotation of college? All those institutions which can be called by the term college. So, this is a college, that is a college, that is a college. All over the world, the numerous colleges, they constitute the denotation of the, of the term college. So, any term for that matter uh, has a, um, refers to the, uh, the variety of individual instances to which a term can be applied or extended. The term book, all those things which can be called by the term book, that is the denotation. So, so, as so many books are in the world, that is the denotation of the term book, all the individual instances. So, any term, the, the denotation of the term table, all those things which can be called by the term uh, table, they are the denotation of the, of the term table. So, those individual things which, to which this term can be applied or extended, that is the denotation. That is the denotation. Connotation refers to the essential characteristics implied in the meaning of the term. 
Now, for instance, the term man denotes all human beings, but the term man connotes the essential characteristics of animality and rationality implied in its meaning. We are not looking at the oh, how many human beings are there. We are looking at the meaning of the term man and what are the essential characteristics that are included or implied in the meaning of the term being animal, being rational. So animality and rationality, they are the essential characteristics in the very meaning of the term man. Therefore, that is the uh, connotation of the term. So denotation refers to the, the various human beings. But denotation refers, we are not looking at the number of human beings, we are referring to the what a human being is. What are the essential characteristics of a human being? And philosophically we say, uh, be, uh, animality and rationality, they constitute the connotation of the term man. Take for instance, uh, uh, college. College, the denotation of the college is the so many numerous institutions that can be called by the term college. So many colleges in the world, all over, the, anywhere. That is the denotation. But then, what is the connotation? What do you understand by the term connotation? The meaning, connot um, um, college. It is an, an institution, an edu an educational institution for higher studies. So these are some of the essential elements that are included or that are implied by the term college. When you say, so this is a college, what do you understand? A college is an institution for an academic institution for higher learning. Then that is the, that is the meaning. So what the meaning of each term contain the essential characteristic. That is the, that is the connotation. So, the, there are other terms also are used corresponding to denotation and connotation. Denotation, another term corresponding to denotation is extension and connotation, another term is comprehension. Rarely the term intention also used, but not that common. Intention, the different spelling. But I mean, I'm not looking at, looking at it, this one. Extension and comprehension. Extension is same as denotation, and comprehension is same as, same as connotation. So I hope the distinction is clear. So piece of chalk, a piece of chalk, what is the denotation? All those things which can be called by the term, we call this is a piece of chalk, that is a piece of chalk. They are the denotation. The numbers, the numerous pieces of chalk, they are the denotation. But then piece of chalk, the term, what does it mean? Why do you call this as a piece of chalk? That is that which is meant for writing on the on the blackboard. I'm just giving you one, one example. So that means that is the meaning, the essential characteristics implied in the meaning of the term, whatever be the term, piece of chalk, table, chair, man, tree. What do you understand by tree? Why do you call this as a tree? Because you have a meaning of the tree. And that means there are some essential elements are there which constitute this as a tree. So, this is the a distinction that has to be registered in the mind. So, that first of all, there is no other way because I, what is called, formulated the two definitions, we have to learn those definitions. Otherwise, um, for first one is, what is denotation? Denotation refers to the variety of individual instances to which a term can be applied or extended. And connotation refers to the essential characteristics 
ഇംപ്ലോയിഡ് ഇൻ ദ മീനിങ് ഓൺ ദ ടോം ഇംപ്ലോയിഡ് ഇൻ ദ മീനിങ് ഓഫ് എ ടോം ട്രീ ട്രീ മീൻസ് ദിസ് ദിസ് വൈ ഐ കോൾ ദിസ് ആസ് എ ട്രീ യു ഹാവ് സം ഐ എസെൻഷ്യൽ ക്യാരക്ടറിസ്റ്റിക്സ് സൊ ദോസ് എസെൻഷ്യൽ ക്യാരക്ടറിസ്റ്റിക്സ് വിച്ച് ഗോ ടു കോൺസ്റ്റിറ്റ്യൂട്ട് എന്ത എസെൻസ് ഓഫ് എ പർട്ടിക്കുലർ തിങ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ദ കോണോട്ടേഷൻ ഓർ കോംപ്രഹെൻഷൻ സൊ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ദ ഡിസ്റ്റിങ്ഷൻ ദാറ്റ് യു ദാറ്റ് വി ഹാവ് മെയ്ഡ് now we refer to the the relation between connotation and denotation very important only if you have understood what is denotation and what is connotation then we are able to relate them and see the the relation and the difference between them and this relation and the difference between denotation and connotation is important again in logic i have given a, a sketch or a schema that will uh, clarify but before i come to the schema or the sketch what is the relation between denotation and connotation i put it this way which you have which you have it in your uh, write up the greater the extension of a term the smaller the comprehension the greater the comprehension the smaller the extension i use the replace the term extension in the place of denotation comprehension in the place of connotation that means put in simple language the est- when the extension or the denotation is more the connotation is less or the con- con- and connotation or the comprehension is less when the denotation is less connotation is more there's a parallel correspondence between the increase of denotation and the decrease of connotation both are closely uh, related as the connotation of the term increases or decreases its denotation decreases or increases respectively as the connotation of a term increases the denotation decreases it become i am going to show it with the example and vice versa when the connotation decreases the denotation increases some logicians hold that connotation and denotation vary in inverse ratio that is there is an exactly proportionate increase and decrease between the connotation and the denotation of a term that is only exactly as this increases the other one decreases we are show it going to show it if the connotation is doubled the denotation is halved when the connotation is or put out yeah, when the extension is doubled that means more extension the connotation becomes half it is this increases that decreases i think example may uh, clarify i put it which is given in the may not be that clear but then um so here yeah so we are uh, on the one hand we speak about denotation another one is connotation we are taking the example i given a few examples that may be okay good a uh, being living being 
What is the other one? Human being, you know? An animal. Humans. Uh, Indians. AP. Janabert. And then Peter. One individual person. So here, we can take an example, being. That means anything that is, is being. What is the denotation of the term being? It is so large. Why it is so large? Because it includes, it includes everything. Humans, non-humans, tables, chairs, rocks, water, everything is included. So what is the denotation? What is the variety of individual instances to which the term being can be applied? It is the largest. The largest denotation because numerous are the beings. Therefore, the denotation of the term being is so much. But we take another term, living being. Living being means the denotation is not as many as being. If being is 10,000, living being is only 5,000. Because all the beings are not living beings. Only some beings are living. So that is, the denotation is less. Among the living beings, still we reduce and then we come to animals. Animals are still less. Denotation is less. The humans are still less. Animals means, in philosophy we include humans also among the animals. Therefore, humans are still less. Among the humans, Indians are still less. And among the Indians from Andhra, people in Andhra Pradesh are still less. So denotation is becoming smaller and smaller. And then people of Janambed, and that is still less. And then finally there is only one person, that is a person in Janambed, that is Peter. And the denotation is just one. Just one. So we find the gradual decrease of denotation. Now look at the other side. The other side, when you speak about being, the connotation is only so little. What is the connotation? Anything that is. That is the connotation. But then what is the connotation of living being? Living being, anything that is, plus something that is living as well. That means an additional connotation is added. Anything that is, that is only a being. To that one, we add living. Therefore, connotation becomes more here in for the living being. Not only, be, no, so all the connotation of being plus it is living. Then when you come to the, the animals, all the connotation of living being plus it can, the mobility, it is able to move. The, the, the plants are not included. In the, uh, in the living being they are included, but among the animals the plants are not included. So only those living beings which are able to, with the, uh, which is, uh, as the character of mobility, they are called animals. That means the, the denotation is less, only so many animals. But the connotation is more, because all the connotation of living being, in addition to that one, one more connotation has to be added, that is mobility. Therefore, connotation becomes more, denotation is less. Coming to human beings, connotation of all the animals are there. In addition to that one, something more is added, that is animality, sorry, rationality. So all the, the connotations of um, animals are there in human being, plus what? Plus 
rationality. So connotation becomes more, more the connotation. And when you come to Indians, it is still more. All the human, yeah, all the connotations of humans are in the Indians. In addition to that one, they have to belong to India. Only then they become Indians. An additional connotation, an additional characteristic. And still more connotation we find among the people in Andhra Pradesh. All the Indians, they are Indians, plus they have to be in Andhra Pradesh. Only so that is a additional connotation. And then you come to Janampet, it is a, again, um, in addition to being in Andhra Pradesh, they have to be in Janampet. And then finally comes what is called the uh, one particular individual and that means the connotation is more. He has to be a being, living being, uh, animal, rational animal, uh, Indians, Andhra's, yeah, Indians, Andhra, and then Janambet, and then so and so. So more and more connotations are added, more and more specifications are added, but the denotation becomes less and less. How do you write the postal address? How do you write? The address is written, this is the logic followed. What is the logic followed in, in, in writing an address? You write the name, one individual name. We cannot immediately cannot go and find out the individual name. You make it a little bigger, you get the family name. In a name, in a particular family name, in a particular village, a particular uh, uh, mandal, a particular district, particular state, particular country, we are making wider and wider. This is the logic of writing a, a, an address. And then we are able to locate an individual person by all these characters. We are going on adding. He has to be an Indian, he has to be an Andhra, and so on. Then finally, so and so belonging to this particular family, in this, partic in this village, in this family, this particular person. So as we go on adding more and more specifications, specifications is another term for the essential characteristics. The more and more specifications are added, the denotation becomes less and less. All the tables, the denotation is so many, but then wooden table, we have added one more specification. So the number of, and the denotation becomes less. All the tables are not included in the denotation of wooden table. Sorry, all the tables, I mean, oh sorry, all the tables are not wooden tables. So when you add more specifications, the denotation is narrowed down. It becomes less. The more you add, wooden table, you add one more, wood that is made, that is uh, teak wood. So again we are adding, it is, uh, the denotation becomes uh, narrowed down, more and more specifications. Teak wood brought from this particular shop. And go on, you go on adding more and more specifications. The denotation becomes uh, less and less. That is, that we have to understand. We will uh, come more about it, but you cannot forget. Now we will play a little more, I mean play means um, to, uh, the understanding, the relation between denotation and connotation will be taken up again, especially when you come to the question of uh, uh, what is called definition. So I hope the notions are clear. Denotation refers to the individual instances to which a term can be applied or extended. Paper, that's a term. That, what is the denotation of the, of the paper, the term paper? All the papers in the world, they are the denotation. But what is the connotation? When, you, when I say, when I use, or when you use the expression, paper, you have a meaning. That meaning contains a certain essential characteristics. Why do you call this as a paper? You have them, you have in your mind some essential characteristics. That 
make you call this as a paper. Therefore, those essential characteristics that are included in the meaning of a term, that is the and that is the connotation, those essential characteristics. Now, I made the relation between the two. The more the connotation, less the denotation. More the denotation, less the connotation. A, a cars, parallel correspondence we can find. That is what I have. I have shown here with this, with this schema. So being is the denotation is the largest because it includes everything. Denotation less in the living being, but connotation little more is added. Denotation less in animal, but connotation is little more added. Denotation is less in humans, but more connotation. That the more less the denotation, more the connotation. So when you come to an individual person, then naturally the denotation is only just one, but the connotation becomes largest. That is the, the link between or the relation between connotation and, and denotation. Having said that one, we just uh, uh, in this particular unit, uh, the, the relation between term and concept or no relation, what exactly is a concept? Our purpose was to clarify what a concept is, but then uh, immediately we cannot jump into concept. Therefore, we started with the term. Now we are trying to understand what a concept is. The term is the verbal sign by which a concept is expressed. Verbal sign means, verbal means, not that nothing to do with the verb. Verbal means a word. Is a, a, a either written word or oral word. I am expressing a concept by means of oral word or written word. The concept of table. The moment I say uh, it is a uh, it is a table, I am using using a a term. I am expressing the concept by means of a term. I cannot express without the term. So, but then, what am I expressing? What the terms are pointing towards? What they are? A concept. That is the foundation. A concept is expressed by means of a term, either orally or in the written way. To understand what a concept is, we have to distinguish it from image. So, again, just as we have done in the case of term, we have, dist we have distinguished it, a term from a name and a word in order, to, uh, in order to clarify the meaning of the term, we have differentiated a term from name and word. So also here, our purpose is to clarify what a concept is. But then, for that we found, we find that it is better to differentiate concept and image because there is always a danger of a concept being taken as equivalent to an image. Therefore, we are differentiating. Image is the mental picture, the sense representation of some singular concrete object. Image is the mental picture or sense representation of some um, singular concrete object. You look at the fan and then you take your eyes away from the fan but you have the image in your mind. The image of that fan, even if I don't see the fan, in the mind it is registered. The picture, I already photographed that one. That is in my mind. And that is an image, image of this particular fan. So image is always of a, a particular object. We can have the image of this fan, not the image of fan. We can have the image of a particular person, not the image of man. 
we can so any concrete human a concrete reality we can have the have the image and then but as different from that one concept is the idea or notion which i form about what an object really is its essence abstracted from its non essential individual characteristics i am trying to be as precise as possible which is more difficult so this fan as the individual characteristics of this particular color this particular shape this particular uh, design or size that is of this particular fan but and i can have the image of the same my image also has got the same color same shape but concept of fan that does not have this color that does not have this three uh, three uh, leaves it can have more concept of fan what a fan is when you say when i use the expression it is a fan that is a fan why do you use the term fan because you have the concept of fan that is not because of this particular color i am using this is a fan but because we understand what a fan is concept is what something is essentially that is that is the meaning of concept um concept is the idea or the notion which i form about what an object really is its essence abstracted from its non essential individual characteristics that means i don't take the individual non essential characteristics the color is not an essential characteristic the shape is not the essential characteristics all those things i leave out i i take only the concept contains what only the essential characteristics and what is that one something that stirs the air something anything it can be of any color it can be made of any object but the concept is that one that does not have all the individual characteristics that belong to an image is left out in the notion of fan in the idea or the concept of fan the particular individual characteristics are left out only the what is what something is essentially only that is there that is there that is the concept that's an idea image is the sense representation concept is the abstractive representation of the object image is sense representation that means what i see what i touch what i hear that is the image it can be also not only see the image can be also of the music that you heard you have the you have the picture of that particular music so and so singing of that singing it is connected with the sense sense experience the five senses the sense experiences concept does not represent object in its singularity but in its essentiality image refers to an individual singular object seeing image of a particular fan image of a particular person but when you speak about the concept of fan it does not refer to any individual fan it refers to fan in its essence what a fan is that is the concept so that is the um, the humanity humans are able to form concept that is the biggest difference between humans and the non humans we are able to come from concept the babalos are able to eat grass but then they have the concrete image and the concrete reality of grass but they cannot form the concept of grass humans are able to form by simple apprehension the three uh, three uh, functions of mind or intellect we have seen simple apprehension judgment and reasoning so that is the step by step we have already seen those points okay i can have the image of one particular person and not of a man i already said that one i can have the image of um what is suresh 
image, that picture, this particular person. But I cannot have the image of man. I can have only, can have only the concept of man, the idea of man, which includes, which has to be apply, applicable to every human being. It is abstraction that raises the objects from the plane of mere sensibility to that of intelligibility. How am I able to move from the image to the concept? By abstraction. That is our ability. We are able to go to a higher level abstraction. That is, it is abstraction by which we are able to move to the higher um, uh, we are from image to the to the concept. The image cannot be applied to all in the class. Concept can be applied to the whole class. Image also of only of a an individual particular object or person, but concept applies to the whole class. When I say the concept of man, it implies every human being. It has to be applicable. Having said this one, we are only putting them together, the contrast between image and concept. Image is material, that means it is more sense-centered material. Concept is immaterial. Image of this man, that is material, that means more concrete. The other one is the concept of man is immaterial. From, the, from materiality I leave out, I run, come to the realm of the idea of man. Image is concrete, concept is abstract, maybe more or less the same meaning. Image is variable, concept is constant. Image is variable means image of this man is different from image of this man. They are variable, but concept of man is constant. It is the same. We cannot use the concept of this man and that man. It is, concept is constant. Image is of an individual, concept is of universal. Man, concept of man, and not this man. And image at the level of sensibility, and concept at the level of intelligibility. Sensibility means uh, something to do with all the senses, that level. But that is only image. But from that one, we have to move to the higher level, that is the intelligibility. And that is, now children, I just coming to that point again immediately, the last part in this unit, that is, when children are taught about numbers, they are taught, simply they are not, they are not taught 5 plus 5 is 10. That is already an abstraction. It is five the but then they are they are given five lozenges plus five lozenges ten lozenges ah they get the idea ten but the idea of ten is and that is only an abstraction it's called a mathematical abstraction we are coming to that one so just a last point in this unit in this context it is good to remind ourselves of the three degrees of abstraction that Thomas Aquinas speaks of so we use the expression abstraction. I am able to uh, move from the sensibility to intelligibility, from image to the concept through abstraction. And Thomas Aquinas speaks of three levels. The first degree is used in the empirical sciences. Second one is used in mathematics. And the third degree of abstraction is used in philosophy. So, that even in the empirical sciences, there is some sort of abstraction is there. The example of, uh, we already referred to that one, water gets boiled at 100 degrees centigrade. I am not checking this water, but then I am able to uh, see from the experience in one place, I am able to apply that one to this place. That is some sort of an abstraction, but it is not, uh, but then for the sake of start with. From that one, mathematics, as I told, 2 plus 2 is 4. That is a concept. But two things and two things, there is more concrete. Two, the idea of two, all the calculation that we do in mathematics is an abstraction, mathematical abstraction, second degree of abstraction. 
but the highest degree of abstraction is the third degree that is used in philosophy wherein we are able to arrive at the concept the concept of table concept of grass concept of tree concept of man it is not rather than remaining mostly we remain at the level of image and taking it as equivalent to a concept but it is not so there we have to leave out all the uh, sensible qualities individual qualities and come to the very idea concept is reached by that one in order to reach concept our abstraction must be raised to the highest level so if we are not able to come up to that level if we keep ourselves only at the level of sense experience sense experience of eating and drinking and sleeping and so on we will remain at the level of the animals we must raise our abstraction to the highest level then we are able to understand concept as different from image